All right, welcome back to Zwing HQ for another video. It's been a couple months since our fun little drift trip down to Vegas and LA. We ran into some difficulties with our drivetrain, which we will talk about in another video. We also had a lot of difficulty with our wiring, which led me to get in touch with my good friend Gabby, who got me in touch with the right people on Holly's team to get us hooked up with this badass Terminator X Max, something I've actually been wanting for a long time, and this 12.3 inch digital dash, which may or may not fit in our Big Duck Club carbon fiber dash inside the car. That being said, I have no business installing these beautiful, nice parts on my car, so I've enlisted some craftier hands than my own. Say hello. How's it going, guys? Tenor here is a wiring specialist who's got tons of years of experience, and he happens to live in Seattle. Why don't you tell them what you're gonna do for us? We have this wonderful Terminator X Max kit. Uh, we're gonna look at all the uh, wiring management inside the car, consolidate that all down, and just work with something that's actually going to survive truly the life of a car again, 20, 30 years, which is what this kit is designed to do. Yeah. So After we rip all that detritus out of my car, I think between this beautiful Terminator X Max wiring harness, the ECU, the digital dash, and Tenor's crafty hands, we're gonna have a badass wiring system for this car once and for all, and I will no longer be dealing with those issues. My favorite thing about building cars is getting rid of loose ends, and this is a big one. So, without further ado, let's start the time lapse and rip this harness out. Let's make it reliable. Let's do it. High five. <laughs> Do something major and not throw it on the ground. Stupid jerk. <laughs> a bear LS without a wiring harness on it. We're gonna replace that with this. So, Tenor, what did you just do? Well, you see all this professional wiring right here? Yeah. And I decided to get rid of it, and we're gonna okay. reinstall better, more well, professional wiring. Okay, we're taking out more wires and starting over again. So, the only thing we're keeping is a uh, chassis for the lighting. So, so, tail lights to dash we keep, and then everything else is fresh and brand new. Basically, yeah. This is a brand new fuel harness, this one. This is like untangling a bunch of knots in your hair and you just want to grab scissors and just cut it. Or like there's a piece of gum that's just holding this all together. We got it untangled for the most part though. This goes to the switch panel. But look at how like, ugh, it's all just like this tangled mess. It's not how a chassis harness is supposed to be. It's supposed to be there's a piece that comes out over here and there's a piece that comes out over here and you don't have to worry about all of the spaghetti noodles just intertwining with each other and creating knots, right? Right. Do you want to cut the knots? No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> chassis harness, separated things, so we can recycle whatever we need to. This is the PDM. That's the sound system harness. That is the power window controls. That's the turn signal harness. Ignition. Original E36 chassis harness wiring that remained. Fuel pumps that go to the back to the surge tank and the fuel cell. Extra wiring, gauge stuff, and those little power blocks. This is all gonna go nice and neat into this little box. 
And we'll put the things that we're not going to use at the bottom. <laughs> Look at that, now it's all organized. It's not just a clump of stuff that we're going to have to deal with later. So you saw we pulled out the chassis harness in the E36 and very quickly we got a package from ProWire. So that's something we're going to open up later for you guys to check out. Another thing is I decided to go with the Fast LSXR intake manifold, which I'm really stoked to get installed. These things aren't supposed to get you a whole lot of horsepower, but being that I have a 102 mouth opening on my drive-by-wire throttle, I wanted my opening on my intake manifold to match so we could maximize air volume when we go back on the dyno and try to get some power and to add to that I went ahead and went with the fast mid-length high horsepower intake runners. That little screw that's got some Loctite on it already. Get the screw started in there. So we're just going to place this over when we're done. We're going to put some RTV to seal the corners and then we're going to have a nice 102 millimeter open mouth intake manifold. The reason we went with the fast over the Holly is we wanted to keep that same low uh, hood clearance so we don't have to cut a hole in the center of our hood. The next thing we wanted to share with you guys today is ProWire is helping us out with some mil spec uh, race wiring to build this chassis harness with. Um, if we're going to do this Permanently for the E36, we're going to do it right. Check it out. This is our super thick, nice race spec ground wire. This is our super nice race spec power wire. This is very nice, high quality stuff that we know we're going to be able to uh, rely on. This is going to be used for our alternator, this is going to be used for our starter, this is going to be used for our battery cutoff switch. They will all be interconnected with nice, reliable, mil-spec race wiring. And then in this bag is going to be just a lot of components needed to build the chassis harness. So here's what 25 feet of loom looks like. These are basically positive and negative terminals. You get a little uh, fuse box right here. You know what's crazy is when you build a race car, this is all you need. You no longer need your big old fuse box. Obviously depending on what you're building. Yeah, we got everything we need to start building this chassis harness. Moving on. Uh, with the fast manifold, you need these Allen button head screws as these guys protrude a little too much from keeping the uh, from getting that intake manifold down. Um, also, we had to switch to 110 millimeter bolts instead of the 114 millimeter bolts that come with the LS3's stock intake manifold. And as you can see here, you're already underway, changing those bolts out one by one, trying to keep this valley cover still properly sealed. Fresh new hardware, always a good thing.
Seems like a big feat to accomplish, but when you're this organized, what can't be accomplished in a reasonable amount of time? Um, big thanks to Oxbeam for uh, jumping in, helping us out, giving us a fresh switch panel. Uh, we got some sweet headlights to test out. I'm really excited to see how the car looks with those on. Also, big thanks to Joey from ProWire USA helping us out. All right, guys, so we got everything laid out. Uh, big thanks, first of all, to Joey from ProWire. Moving on, we've already talked about Holly, but Oxbeam, thanks to these guys, they hooked us up with a fresh switch panel. Um, even though we've got one that's in good shape, we just want to start fresh with everything we're doing so that we're eliminating a vari any variables that would lead to, why is this not turning on, scenario. Um, see, we got the circuit breaker that comes with it, the switch panel, and we got some sweet, just really bright LEDs. I'm really excited to see what this looks like. Yeah, without further ado, I think we should get started. Let's do it. Yeah. 